Hey everybody, welcome to video number 9 in the UE5 vehicle tutorial series. Uh, in this video, we'll make a quick tutorial on how I made the 3D gauges here for the vehicles. Now, this isn't meant to be the final version of anything. It's, uh, it's actually uh, quite a bit of a hack. This is in no way the proper way to do this. The uh, proper way would be to use a widget with a material texture animated material actually to, to have that needle move around change color and whatnot uh, and then use that as a 3d widget that you could place in the world that's a lot of work the player won't be able to tell the difference so screw that let's make something that is quick fun easy and looks good here uh, with text renders now the problem with 3D widgets is they're affected by the by the uh, anti-aliasing, and so they they look blurry, unreadable. They they look like crap. It's a, it's a bug, I'm sure. But text renders, for some reason, since they're not textures, you can scale them up as much as you want, and they are always going to look perfect. Always like this. This is massive. Or you can make them really, really tiny and they're still gonna look good. Oops. And so that's nice because you can position them in any way you want in the world. You can animate their movements as well as animate the widget itself. And you, you can do a lot with them. I've put a glowing material on that one so that the, uh, the bloom would make the edges softer it also helps it stand out a lot from the rest of the scene because uh, you can't cast shadows on it and so yeah this is this is what I've got so far we'll be making a different one since uh, I'm gonna redo it for this tutorial I might as well do it a little better than that I'm not quite happy with this one so and I found out you know, discovered new things after I've done after I've done it. So let's actually go ahead and go into our tutorial folder. We will create a blueprint that is going to be a child of the actor class. We'll call it BP Tutorial Gauges. Open that up. Now, default scene root, I actually remove, or actually uh, I'm adding a scene instead and making that the root by dropping it onto the default scene root. There you go, because the, the scene doesn't have a, an icon, and so when you, when you place it in the world, it's easier to see the, the widget, because uh, otherwise, if I just control Z that, you'd see that all the time. Let me actually place that here so you can see why I don't like this. See, if you were to use that, you would kind of always have that little billboard in the way of your widget. And so, uh, by using a scene component, you can remove that. So that's that. Now let's just real basic add two text renders. One is going to be for the speed and the other one for the RPM and we're going to name them accordingly. So that one would be speed text. Duplicate that. Call it RPM text. Let's not put them one on top of the other. Okay. Let's set the RPM to text here, zero, and the speed itself to, let's say, zero mile per hour. Then into the event graph, onto beg and play, what we're going to do is we're going to get the parent actor.
get parent actor because the way we're going to spawn this into the world is to uh, inside the vehicle blueprint create a child actor and set the actor to be this effectively making the vehicle blueprint the parent actor of this blueprint meaning we can cast the parent actor to our Porsche blueprint or the Porsche 911 tutorial in this case and promote that to a variable again I, I do this quite fast sometimes all you gotta do here is drag out of the uh, the blue pin and promote to variable give that a name owning vehicle should be a pretty easy to remember name now let's use that variable right here and uh, get the movement component variable get movement component variable now if you remember I'll show you again in case you haven't watched the, the other videos this is the Porsche blueprint and what I do is I get this component here and I cast it to a chaos wheeled vehicle movement component and I set that as a variable just like I did into the uh, the gauges blueprint and so I don't have to do this cast all the time whenever I want to grab a variable out of it like speed or a uh, engine rotation which is the RPM and so this is the variable we're getting right now inside of the uh, gauges blueprint so with that variable right here I was mentioning RPM, let's do that first. Now the RPM we uh, really don't need the decimal, like I don't care if it's a 1200.3 RPM. So we're going to round that just to make it uh, an integer which is a whole number no decimal and we could use format text to just remove the decimal but again let's try to keep it as simple as we possibly can so this is our RPM we can grab the RPM text here set text now you can see you have a, a lot of options uh, the scale, word size, the alignment, the color, the material so you can do a lot with these. Well, just set the text for now. And uh, it's actually append, I believe. Nope. Uh, make literal. Hold on a second. Let me try to remember this. <laughs> Uh, let's work with strings because I'm more familiar with those they're easier to work with for me so to text string and then in the string we'll use an append which allows us to add text so let's uh, plug the round in here it'll automatically create this little conversion node then here we will have just a space and RPM. Plug that into the event tick. And then for the speed, we'll do roughly the same thing. Except we'll get get forward speed in mile per hour. 
and again get the speed text set it set text the value will be a to string another append again I don't want any decimals so I'll just round that as we did for the RPM plug that into the first then in B add a space and mile per hour now that is as basic as you're gonna get it but it's gonna work and that's pretty much all the blueprints we need and the rest is all just design so let's go ahead and implement that into our vehicle right away so that would be again the Porsche 911 tutorial now the only thing you need to do is go here into the viewport add child actor you can name that whatever or not name it at all it's it's okay you won't be using that let's call it gauges position it behind the car here and set the actor to be child actor component child actor class that would be the tutorial BP tutorial gauges and you can see from the preview we've got our little widget let's rotate it like so you could attach this to the camera so it's always in the same position on the screen as a traditional widget would be but at that point you might as well just make a widget you know so let's see what that gives us you can see we're a little bit outside of the uh, scope of the camera but it works now you can see the RPM is a thousand because that's my idle RPM and that's a little boring because it's only text so let's actually make it a little prettier and also uh, have a little indication for the what gear we're on to lots of errors let me see what's happening here access to none oh oh yeah of course that's weird oh well let's go back into is that that's all we had to do for the, the car blueprint and so it's that easy to add your speed gauges to a car actually let's uh, position them a little better so we can actually see what we're doing let's position it right here for the time being just make sure here the owning vehicle is valid that's the wrong one I always get the wrong one you'll want to use the one with the question mark <laughs> and that's just gonna make sure we're not trying to get the, the values for these before we've actually set the owning vehicle that should get rid of the errors actually even better than that because that child actor is going to spawn before the begin play and before that variable is set we're going to use that variable here in the is valid instead and so if that if that variable wasn't set yet then we're not going to do anything just so we don't get errors let's try that right here
Oh, never mind. Sorry about that. Those errors are coming from uh, the one here I've put into the scene. It's giving me a bunch of errors because it's not hooked up to a vehicle. <laughs> That's better. What the hell? Yeah, okay, now is valid. It's giving me a bunch of errors too. Come on, Unreal. Stop being picky. <laughs> yeah, you want to get rid of those errors right away. You don't want them adding up and then not knowing where they're from. So do not tolerate any of these. Come on, why are you doing this to me right now? I've never had that problem before. Oh, of course. Jeez. That one also is not attached to a vehicle. <laughs> okay, we don't have any errors anymore. I'm so sorry, I'm terribly tired. Just back from work. <laughs> yeah, as I said, you do not want to tolerate any errors. Because then the uh, first thing you know, you get thousands of them and you have no idea where to come from anymore. And so... Okay... Now I guess the next thing to do would be to get the uh, current gear. Get current gear. And make a display for that too. But uh, let's... Uh, let's make that a little more interesting to look at. That's the speed in mile per hour. I'm actually going to make two texts for these because I want the mile per hour to be smaller and not positioned to the right, just for design purposes. So that one here, I'm just going to set to zero. And then I'll duplicate the speed text. The text on that one is going to be mile per hour. And we'll make it a little smaller. Here the uh, world size, let's make it half. Zero mile per hour. RPM, we're not actually going to be using a text variable. <clears throat> we're going to be uh, using a, uh, a proper gauge with a, a needle. That looks awesome. And then, then the, let's put that underneath. Let's make sure the alignment for the speed text is centered. Because that's going to change. It's going to go from 0 to 10 and then possibly even 100. And you want it to stay centered. So a mile per hour, we're also going to set the pivot to center. Just so we can set the same Y value for the both of them. Actually, that Y value is going to be 0. I'm going to be uh, centering those. There you go. Now, the gear, let's actually uh, grab the RPM text, change it to gear text, because we're not going to be using the, the text for the RPM. This one's going to be in the bottom right, so let's, uh, text bottom is okay, Horizon, horizontal alignment would be to the right, uh, something like that, for now. We'll do the the needle thing for the RPM, then we'll know a little better where where to put it. We could actually end up just putting it underneath here. But nah, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. By the way, uh, the rest of the, the video is just me, you know, drawing stuff with the, the text renders just to make it look pretty. And basically the, the blueprint part of it is finished. So the rest is only uh only just designing it to look good so you you can stop watching if you want <laughs> I'm gonna be doing this for myself anyway so feel free to stick around and watch me do it this might actually end up being a long video just because of that but you you can stop whenever you want we're done uh, yeah yeah I guess we're gonna be adding a bunch of dashes lines and dots to create the uh, 
RPM gauge. Let's duplicate that. By the way, I'm not worried about the world size because uh, we can scale that would get as much as we want. I'm just worried about the relation between one text to the other. So that one I made 13 just because I wanted the scale to be half the scale of the number. But really though, those numbers can be anything you want. So let's uh, let's let's duplicate that. Now the name is completely irrelevant, so we'll just call it text. Set the text of that one first. The horizontal alignment. Set that to right. Text center. This one is only going to be a minus sign with a bunch of sp spaces. Eh, a little less than that, maybe. There you go. Uh, it could also, I suppose, be a dot, if you want. Let's actually make it a dot. And then use the uh, shift enter to create new lines. And that's going to be your dot. You can use that. And instead of the right, you're going to use center. Really just do whatever you can use left. Or, if you want to be fancy, you can set all of that back to default and use Alt 250 to have a centered dot and then a bunch of spaces. And then here again, text center and right there. So now you have a dot that's aligned with its pivot or its location. So you can rotate that around one for each thousand RPM. So it's actually here, set that to zero. Set the mile per hour lower than that. Set that one to zero as well, because we want the, the RPM to be rotating around the speed. Or actually, do we? Nah. Nah, we don't want that. Let's just somewhere in the middle here. Or just, nah, zero. Zero is good. Now E, rotate. Go with the flow here and just uh, something like this should be good. It's maybe maybe a little too far. Okay, and then uh, we need ten of those. One for zero, thousand, two thousand. So we need ten. So let's duplicate that. Let's uh, go ahead and add 30 degrees in between for 300 degrees. So we got a 60 degree gap to be able to put the gear text. Now, well, like I said, this is kind of a hack. <laughs> You're not supposed to be using text renders to make UIs, but whatever player won't see any difference. It's quick. I enjoy it. Let's roll with it. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would be nine. Let's uh, select all that. Rotate it a little bit to center it better. Yeah, let's disable the uh, angle snap. And something like this should, should be perfect. Alright. 
now how about you go underneath here <clears throat> Text bottom, center, or actually text top. And uh, yeah, yeah, this is going to be the gear. Now we need a, a needle to show the RPM. Actually, let's add some numbers to there. Some really small, subtle numbers. Yeah, nope, nope, don't do that. <laughs> Again, let's go to the right. Okay, I can't do that. It has to be perspective. Try to line it up as good as we can. Try to find a text that's not like all sorts of weird angles. Uh, let's make it small. We don't want that to be too distractive. Too distracting. Let's uh, center everything like so. That would be our zero RPM. Copy and paste that. For the thousand, oops, okay. And just for good measure, let's uh, let's on Google let's find me a an RPM gauge just to see the uh, how they write the multiplier for the RPM. All right. Okay. Oops. There you go. <laughs> that was so necessary. Uh, how about we select all of these and change their colors to be red. Text render color. Let's make that nice, nice deep red. Okay, sure. Now, now, now. We need a needle. Again, your needle could be anything you want. Let's copy and paste one of the dots, remove a couple spaces, actually just one. Replace the dot with a minus sign to make a needle. Nah, sure. Sure, why not? That's what I did for the other one. You you could use 
an arrow if you want, I guess. Something like this. And just remove a bunch of spaces. And, you know, tweak the scale to like really small. Maybe not five, but add a bunch of spaces. You know. Sure, let's go with that, yeah. You could add a bunch of little lines in between as well. Which we're not going to do. And that would be our speed gauge. Right there. Oh, we need to actually get the text for the, the gear. Let's do that. That's going to be uh, too far off. Where can I put this so it won't look crap? Yeah. Sure, let's lower these. And lower that as well. Okay, I could actually make that slightly smaller as well. Or like 7.5. Yeah, that does it for me. Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't like the arrow. <laughs> Alright, I think we got it. So rotation here, let's say 45 for zero, or actually 46 for zero. Let's uh, let's open up Notepad. 46 for zero. Sorry, 46. And what about 9,000? 9,000 would be something like. Minus 225. Okay, because we're actually going to rotate that. So let's give it a good name. Like, can I rename you, please? That would be RPM. RPM needle. Okay. Okay, now let's remove this and instead get our RPM needle here and set rotation, set relative rotation, that would be the X, so we're going to split that struct pin. Let's use a map range because I love them. Map range clamped. Engine rotation speed and the value. That's going to go from zero to our max RPM. Now, if we were clever, we would use the max RPM get engine max rotation speed from the vehicle that this would get is a child of. Use that for the in range B. And then our values here, if I don't remember them, 46 and minus 225. Boom. Okay, now before we go too far ahead of ourselves, let's make sure that this all still works.
Okay, we can see we're idling at a thousand. And there you go. You can see the, the whole needle is moving. Fabulous. That actually looks pretty darn good. And as you can see, I forgot to remove the RPM, the mile per hour, sorry. From the speed text, let's remove that. You can close notepad now. Don't save. Okay, now here we won't need an append anymore. We actually, we won't need anything except for the forward speed rounded. Plug that here into the, the text. It'll automatically gives you a little conversion node, which is awesome. Okay, now we got speed and RPM displayed quite elegantly, if I dare say. And now let's go with the gear. That would be gear text, I believe, which we're going to set the uh, the text for. Let's have a select here, dragged off of the, uh, the text value. We'll have a couple options. First of all, uh, let's, okay, because the gear, it's going to be minus one for reverse, zero for new, neutral, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, etc. So we need to add one to this. We need to add one. So now if that minus one for rear would be zero so zero here make literal text that would be reverse so just a big r now neutral which would normally be zero will be one so one here let's copy and paste our make literal text set that to neutral or just a big n and then everything else would be just the, the speed, basically. And so, do, 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 let's add another select here. Here, the index. Can we actually make another select and not use an integer? Yep, let's use a, let's use a boolean. because I can. I like showing off. <laughs> All right, now if current gear is less than one, that's true. That means it's either reverse or neutral. We'll be using that. Uh, if it is not bigger than one, then we'll just use the whatever gear as a text and there you go let's try that again just to be sure that it's working let's uh, move that gauge a little higher make it smaller open the vehicle blueprint go to viewport you can see your little 3d widget your uh, child actor your gauge you can lift it you can press R to scale it down or up whatever Let's do something like this, a little more subtle. All right, neutral, that would be one, neutral two. It goes back to neutral while shifting. And I was focusing on the, the gauges, so I wasn't looking. Uh, now if I right click, I go into reverse. There you go, neutral, one, two, you can see that looks pretty good. Now there's a few things we could do, such as make sure the speed is always positive. 
Let's make that bigger. I liked it better when it was bigger. There. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, put the Porsche blueprint in the scene. Just so we can see from the camera view right here. Where are we putting... Let's pin it. So it doesn't go away. We can click off and now we have a clear view of where that gauge is on the screen and we can just move it around until it looks appealing actually uh, actually that was good I didn't have to do any of this the, the position was spot on <laughs> let's remove that from the scene now you can change the color of the text using the same method right here I'm not gonna do any of that I think this this right there looks good on its own I might off camera add some little lines in between some some decorations but oh yeah I said I would make that text absolute so we don't get a, a negative speed and the way you do that is you get the speed here and just add a ABS for absolute and now when you uh, go in reverse it's always going to be positive like so and now just just because I told you you could I'll show you how you can change the color of the text right here so set color set text render color and again you can use to select node One is going to be an integer. The plus one right here will have two options for reverse and neutral. Let's uh, let's make here. Let's make reverse red, right? Let's make neutral white so one everywhere oh also you should probably set the alpha as well to one and then we'll add another boolean so another select again with a boolean that one here if it's true we do that if it's false we just set it to be green for example so alpha one green one as well let's see let's see what that looks like nope not working Hmm. Why though? It looks like it should. Text render color. Oh, would these be like from zero to two fifty five? And like a hundred. Hey, let's let's try it. Oops. Yep, there you go. And there you go, reverse is red. Neutral is green. Well, it should be white. Let's fix that.
Option one, yeah, okay. That's me messing up here. Okay, neutral is white. Then green. Then red. Okay, I like that. I guess also the speed should be green while we're at it. Just to match the uh match the speed. Actually, actually, actually. <laughs> let's have a little bit of fun here. RPM needle, the speed text. Now right here, before we use the absolute, we'll drag off and get a sign float. Now that's going to return either minus 1 or 1, depending if it's a negative or a positive value, or 0, if it's, if it's 0. So again, we're going to round that to get an, an integer, just so we can delete that select here and have another select using an integer we're gonna have three pins we again we we can't have option minus one so we need to add one so it's gonna be zero one and two add one plug that into the index and we'll we'll just make the speed the same color as the the gear so that when you reverse your speed is going to be positive, but it is going to be red, right? And the, uh, I guess the mile per hour text will be white again, just to match the rest of the gauge. That'll make it a little more readable, I think. So let's go ahead and copy and paste all three of these because I'm lazy. Like so. That would be green, that would be positive, that would be red, that would be reverse, or minus one, that would be white, that would be neutral, which is zero speed. And I suppose we also could change the color of the RPM needle to turn red whenever it you know, reaches 7,000 or above to uh, match the, the gauge. We'll do that later. We're just going to try. Okay, zero mile per hour. I like that. It looks good. Boom. <laughs> there you go. Now you can see, uh, you can see the widget has shadows cast to it. You know, it's lit as any object would be. You can use uh, an emissive material on that text. Make sure it's always kind of unlit. So it's always the same, no matter if, uh, if it's dark or not. Like if you're, uh, if you're actually riding your car at night, you won't be able to see the gauge because it's not going to be lit because it's dark. I like that gauge. It looks good. I'm pretty happy with it. So let's right, right away fix that little lighting problem. Then we can worry about the, uh, the RPM needle. Now you can see here, if you select any of the text element, you see the material it's using. You can actually click that little folder with a magnifying glass on it to find it. Now that's going to be into the uh, engine materials. Uh, just go ahead and uh, duplicate that, right? Call it custom, call it whatever. Oh, ah! So clumsy. I'll call it tutorial, because I've already have a custom material. I'm just making this one to show you.
and we don't want to lose that so let's actually move it to a folder such as tutorial right here tutorial zero text emissive and whatever select all of the text here all of them apply the new material which uh, should be selected in the content browser let's apply that to it all right let's uh let's confirm all of them tutorial tutorial okay because sometimes when you do that it, it's only going to uh, have the change affect the first one you've selected so just just confirm it didn't do anything weird now double click that material to get access to its graph well instead of default lit here we'll select unlit here emissive color emissive color how about we use the color we've set multiply it with the opacity the opacity let's multiply it as well actually no never mind don't multiply it we'll use the opacity channel because the text is not translucent it's it's fully opaque we can use the uh, the opacity as a multiplier to the determine how much we want the text to glow so let's go ahead and do that right now here you can see text render color a pass alpha would be 255 if I set it to 1 it becomes a lot darker let me actually zoom in or just just select something bigger idiot 255 so let's say here you want to set something crazy like 5000 it won't let you ah oh, come on text render color okay cool not a problem let's multiply that since we can't go above 255 let's uh, multiply it by 10 okay I should do nicely All right, everything is super glowy. Let's play again. Yeah, super glowy. Now you can see when we turn around, we would usually get shadows. I'll go back into the, the main play area. We would normally get shadows cast onto it, but we don't anymore. So that's awesome. Now that might be a little intense in terms of glowing, but you can set that to whatever you want. So we're starting to have a lot of stuff in that tutorial folder. Let's go ahead and change that needle color like I said I would let's move all of that out of the way copy that here with at least two can I remove that pin nope I can't remove a pin so we'll have to do the uh, select again Oh, and we're going to do a bool anyway, so there you go. Uh, get the engine rotation speed. If it's greater, yeah, let's say greater than 6,500. Uh, if it's false, needle is white, right?
Okay. If it's true, green and blue are zero. Red is 255. It could be a gradient, I suppose. Let's do a yeah. Let's do a map range. Whatever. Can we even do that? That's a byte. What? Can we plug a float in there? Please? No, we cannot. What? Why? This is weird. Okay, I can't actually control that with a variable. What about here? Can I lerp you? Break color. Okay. What about you? What can I do with you? Mm hmm. I can't actually do anything with that. That's weird. Why is it not just like floats? You know? That is so weird. Can I, can I, can I lerp or something? Hmm. Make color. That's, that's that right there. Oh well. I'll have to figure that one out later. Actually, is there another way to set the color? I don't believe so. Nah, you gotta use that. That is weird. Huh. Hey, let, me, uh, let me Google that real quick. There you are, and I can convert you. Use sRGB, okay, that should be true. Okay, cool, that works. Let's use that. Ta-da, okay, zero, 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 whatever. Uh, and now since that's an RGB, that that's probably going to be Zero to one instead of two fifty five. So let's uh, let's let's use a map range clamped again. <clears throat> Plug that into the red. Now we're starting to use that here at sixty five hundred. So input one would be sixty five. <clears throat> input two would be seven thousand. Out range zero will be zero and then one so it's it's gradually going to be going from white to red in between 6500 to 7000 just so it's not like an on off thing oh forgot to plug the target here to our rpm needle and actually just just so we get the the fade we'll set that to uh nah what the hell 5500 instead we can we can always adjust that later and there you go smoothly going from white to red as we get closer to our red line we're a little bit far from the car it's actually going to clip through the ground if we uh, if we roll that's a shame i like it let's move it a little more behind the car like so all 
I think it's glowing too much. It's messing with the colors. So let's fix that. Uh, yeah, I'm just selecting everything that's white. Because everything else, the, the color is set in the blueprint. Text render color, alpha, nah, how about a hundred? Still, still too bright. How about 50? Oh, that's better. Good. Good, good. Like that. How about we may... Nah, nah, let's not overcomplicate that by changing the color to a darker one. Now, uh, mile per hour here. That's 50 as well. Okay, let's set all of the alpha values to 50. Oh, yeah, what about you? Okay, 50. Let's see here. 255 divided by 50. 1 divided by 5. That'd be 0 0.2. Okay, cool. Let's try that and see if it matches correctly. <laughs> like I said, this is quite a hack. That is not how you're supposed to make UIs. But as you can see it's quick, it's fun, it looks great. And it's a it's a good way to prototype your UI before you uh, actually make textures and materials and all that whatnot to uh, make it correctly. If you decide to make it correctly at all, which I don't think you have to but whatever. Okay. Well, that looks awesome. Let's try that again. Yep. The needle is going from white to red. Now, the uh, speed text, the green is actually pretty light. So it seems to be glowing more than the rest. Or perhaps I just forgot to... Uh, Change the alpha value. No, no, I didn't. Okay, let's set that to 25 for good measure. So I think it's too bright. Green here, 25. And I think that's everything. Let's try that again. Not a whole lot better, but better. We can actually make it darker if we want. I think I will. Let's go with 250, no, just 200. Uh, nope, sorry, that's the wrong one. Uh, green, green, where are you? Here. It's 200. What am I doing? Jesus. Green. Green. I should make it darker. Yeah, slightly. Enough. Okay. Okay, I like this. I really like it. Okay. And voila. I'm sure that turned out to be like an hour long or something, but it's it's fine. You don't have to uh, sit through the whole thing. <laughs> but hey, if you did, you're awesome. Thanks for watching the whole thing. Hopefully you can uh, come up with something good with, with everything you've learned in this video. Uh, again, if you enjoy the content, please uh, consider subscribing to the Patreon. Join the Discord channel. And I will see you soon.